Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome back no, wait, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Wow, I probably should have taken another take, but listen, Vlogmas has been um, a lot for me. If you're sick of seeing my face over and over and over again because I'm wearing the same makeup in like pretty much every single video, I am sorry. It is um, doom and gloom outside, so the lighting is probably absolutely terrible. Um, so I wanted to just do a sit down and chat with you guys for today. I was actually thinking about another video that I saw Kelly Goosh put out, which is about um, brands that she tried for the first time in 2021. And looking at my collection here, I haven't really tried that many new brands. I feel like this year with slowing down my makeup consumption, and I didn't do it on purpose really, it was just like, um, not that I slowed down per se, I think I just started buying better quality things um, at smaller intervals. You know, if you're, if you're spending more money, you just can't afford to be buying lots and lots of stuff. And I also found out that I have um, certain mentalities that make me want to collect instead of branching out, spreading out, and having like one thing from every brand. I'm absolutely the opposite. And so when I wanted to sit down and make a list of brands that I tried for the first time in 2021, I didn't really have pretty much any brands. Like, I think I can list like two brands that I tried in the last year. So there wasn't all that much. So instead, I wanted to actually do a video talking about why I don't branch out all that much. As someone who is a self-proclaimed makeup and beauty addict, which I feel like I very much so qualify for because I'm spending a lot of my discretionary income on beauty, makeup products, and pretty much all of my free time is either split on work, so either work on my side business or, you know, working up other stuff, or beauty. Like, that's my main form of entertainment, really, is, is keeping up with the beauty launches. So it's not like I don't know what's going on or I don't care about what's going on. It's just that I have made a very concerted effort to not actually buy what is new to the market, like, in terms of different brands. And today, I just kind of wanted to talk about why, because I only went through this thought experiment recently and kind of went through the process of, of wondering why it is that I'm like this. And I figured it would be interesting to, to hear what you guys think. So Let's get started in no particular order. These are some of the reasons that I had mentioned, and I think today it's going to be a pretty brief video. Okay, first thing is I, I, I have an aversion to individual websites that I'm not super familiar with, and especially websites that don't have um, physical stores that I can return things to. So one of the things that I have an aversion to is buying from websites that don't have uh, like a reputation, and I don't know how to say this in a way that's not um, upsetting, but I find that w stores that are brick and mortar that do have a online counterpart those are easier for me to shop from. So um, Nordstrom, Neiman Marcus, uh, Sephora, obviously, Ulta, you know, stores that have real life um, establishments that are very easily accessible, I am pretty much okay buying from those sites, especially if you can do like a buy online and then return in store or buy online and pick up in store. That to me is like a level of security and of, of basic ease that I really appreciate, um, especially the pick up in store option, uh, because in that instance, you know, I can, if I, it can examine the product before I even take it home and if I don't like it or if it's something that, you know, is broken or the wrong color, it's immediately obvious and I can handle it in one trip. Um, the other piece is, you know, with individual retailers, and I hate to say this as like a small business owner myself, um, but with individual retailers, you never really know what to expect from them because you never really know what their shtick is, right? Uh, for instance, ordering off of Pat McGrath website, um, I just prefer buying from Sephora. I know that she runs sales uh, that are probably more competitive than whatever Sephora does because I think Sephora's high sale goes up to 20% and that's it. And PMG is pretty much like the thing that you buy <laughs> during the Sephora sale because it's on sale. But the thing is, you know, I, I know what to expect from Sephora. I know that I can get points. I know that I can return things. Um, you know, I know that I can swatch things in store. It's just something about the consumer relationship that makes it easier for me to buy from Sephora because I don't know, it just, it's easier. Uh, you know, Pat McGrath, uh, sometimes things come really late and you don't know where something is. Like I ordered a palette and it took over a month to get here. By the time we got it, we had just returned it because there was no reason to wait a month. You know, I had picked it up at Sephora at the time because it took so long. And other websites are similar, you know, and Pat McGrath is a big brand. So I'm thinking on, I can count on my hands how many brands that I've purchased from their home sites. But think about all the indie brands that are are potentially doing uh, business and they're really, really small and you buy something from them and they tell you that it's going to be X amount of time and then it ends up being Y amount of time. You know, and it's not their fault. It's not necessarily an issue. And again, listen, I'm a small business owner. I operate on Etsy though. Um, so there's a little bit more leeway, but I've heard so many nightmare stories, myself included, where you buy from an individual site, let's say they operate from Square or uh, whatever the other uh, Shopify, right? They they have like a, a business that they operate on their own. There's no other third party that you can kind of contact if you have customer service issues and they tell you, listen, like we're just backed up or, you know, like we sent out your order or whatever, um, or we don't offer refunds or whatever, whatever the situation is, 
private business owners are able to set their own parameters. And if you are willing to take a risk on them, then that's the risk that you're willing to take. And I just am very loss averse, you know, like if something comes to me and it's not what I wanted, or um, it came in a condition that I'm not happy with, or if it got shipped at a time with a delay that I don't really approve of, if it says five to seven business days and it comes in 21, I don't like that. I don't like the idea. Um, one of the, the more recent examples I had was ordering from Kaleidos, which is a brand that people see as like a very legitimate company and it is a very legitimate company. I think their company um, creates really beautiful products, but getting their lip products took well over a month. It took a month. And on top of that, it got like caught up by customs. It had to be like reset back and reset out. It was just like a whole big deal. And it's just a lot easier to avoid that. And because the, the order itself was like $150, I mean, that, that's not something you want to let go. You know, it's going to be really frustrating to hear that something is maybe not on the way in the way that you expect. And the worst part is like their tracking information was absolutely zilch. You know, it'd be like, it has departed um, the facility. It's in China. It has departed China. It's in your country. And that was that was pretty much the extent of it. And by the time it got to the US, we never got a follow-up tracking um, uh, code. So we weren't able to track where it was in the US. At one point it went radio silent and we found out it's because it had to be it was seized and like sent back to China. So it was like a whole big thing. And Kaleidos, that's not like the only example. And I'm sure, you know, I, I'm coming at this from an American standpoint where I have all the alternatives. You know, if, you, if you're ordering from other parts of the world, a lot of times the only thing you can do is order online and, and fingers crossed and you hope that it arrives and you don't have uh, the customs duties and all that stuff. Like I know uh, people have to pay to receive packages, which like to me, that is absolutely insane. Um, yeah, like so so ordering in the US is, is vastly easier than anywhere else in the world. But even so, if I have the option to buy in person, I just prefer to buy in person and, and not to use third party sites. It's just there's something about me and my loss of version that makes it, you know, difficult for me to, to swallow that. So I just don't. Um the next thing is there's a lack oftentimes there's a lack of community information about that product. And I don't know if that's always the case, but for me, when a new brand comes out or a new line of stuff comes out, I you know, I I don't like stuff that's not tried and true. I'm not someone who is always like rushing to get like the newest best shiniest thing i want the the best shiniest thing when it's not new i want it when it's like already established to be like something that's really beautiful um unless it's it's something that like is within like within reason it's going to be good like for instance an eyeshadow formula comes out um but the brand itself is already known for having pretty good eyeshadow and everything about it is good then i'm probably willing to, to risk it like to buy something from that company uh for instance um uh, I don't know, like Natasha Nona palettes, uh, probably it's going to be fine, right? Because we already know that there's a wealth of information that points to that product being reasonably good quality. Um, in the same way that ColourPop kind of has like a, a consumer consensus of being relatively good quality. But when it comes to new brands, I often find that, you know, you, you want to wait a little bit for, for the news to come out. And sometimes the opinion takes a while to, to change. Like for instance, when the KVD Bad Apple Foundation came out, it went super, super viral. Um, but then after like three weeks, people said, actually, this stuff sucks. <laughs> you know, like actually it's, it's terrible because you can't wear it for a long time. It cracks. It's really hard to get a hold of the colors that you want. Um, you know, X, Y, and Z, whatever. Like there's a million and one reasons why something may not be what you think it's going to be. But I, I don't really want to take that risk. Again, it comes back to me being loss averse. I, I just don't want to risk things that are maybe bad if I can just wait for it to be seen as, as positive, overwhelmingly positive. And then at that point, it's kind of like, well, if I could go for something that has 2,000 reviews versus something that has like 8,000 reviews, I'm going to go for the one that has 8,000 reviews because it just, there's more data there for me to make an informed decision. And it's just easier to go with the thing that has more more, not legitimacy, but I guess like more of a legacy behind it. Um, unless the thing itself is so attractive to me because it's innovative in some way. Oh my God, what just fell? Um, but anyway, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm very <laughs> averse to trying things and, and being one of the first to review. It's just not in my nature. Okay, another thing is uh, in-person shopping is just better to me. There's something about the routine of shopping in person that I find much more luxurious. I don't even want to say luxurious, but there's something more exciting about the process of going shopping, even if you already know what you want. So let's say I have had my eye on, for instance, this, um, the Rose Quartz palette. I already knew that I, I wanted it. Like I, I had seen it online. I had thought, okay, I've been waiting for this palette to release this year. I know that Huda has an amazing eyeshadow formula. I basically panned the one that came before the predecessor. I panned the whole freaking thing. Like there's basically no shadows left in it. Um, so I know that this is likely going to be something that I like. However, I'm not willing to buy it online having laid no eyes on it first, right? Like, especially because this kind of product, you can see it in person. Um, there are hobbies that I have, like for instance, collecting fountain pens. Um, that's the kind of thing that you also do want to see in person, but there are not many fountain pen stores, right? There are not many fountain pen stores that carry the, the brand that you like and the nib size that you like and the color that you like. So certain things are just like, it's not possible, but makeup is not one of those things. And especially makeup from a mainstream brand. And to me, it's just easier to buy in person. And a lot of the cool exclusive stuff that you're seeing online or on YouTube, it's not in stock yet, or it's, it's 
an online exclusive or whatever, like some of the bundles, some of the more interesting shades. Um, for instance, Ritual de Fee does some shades that are not available via Ulta, and so it's just not possible for me to like look at them or test them or return them or whatever. All of those things just make it harder for me to want to buy because if you're not gonna let me see it, then how am I gonna know if I really want that thing? Um, and I guess a lot of people don't have that concern. I know a lot of people who are willing to buy, for instance, perfumes blind, sight unseen. And I just, like that conception to me is is absolutely buck wild because how would you know if you like it? What if the, the texture is wrong? What if the size is like a lot smaller than you think? And I'm constantly seeing people receive things um, in the mail and going, wow, this is like smaller than I thought, or this is not what I thought it was going to be, or this is less pigmented, this is more chalky. And it's like, you know what would have solved that problem is if you tried it before you actually purchased it. Um, and then you wouldn't have the shock of being disappointed and you wouldn't have the issue of wasting a brand new product you know makeup is one of those things that there are testers there's so many testers available especially if you're talking about like a mid to high end product um, or even a prestige brand anything from like mid range to up mid range and up like for the most part there's going to be testers um, and so it just seems like an absolute waste to spend money on something that you haven't even seen um, especially if it's not a, a web exclusive if it's not a brand exclusive like exclusive to to like this particular uh, location like Ulta exclusive shades um, and you don't have an Ulta near you. I just like for me I um, I find it easier to just go in person. There are indie brands, there are particular formulas that are online only and for that I just skip it or I just take my chances um, and then with drugstore products sometimes there's no testers and then I take my chances there but the losses are much smaller because it's maybe like ten dollars right? So personally <laughs> I'm just more apt to buy something if I can try it in person and there's a lot of brands that are brand new or they're starting out that are not available to do that in person and so that's another reason why I don't try many new brands. Another one, this is kind of a, a light <laughs> breezy one so there's not really that much logic here but I'm happy with what I have and what I mean to say is I'm happy with the brands that I've tried. I haven't tried like a million one brands. I definitely haven't tried uh, the majority of the brands that are out there on like the, the major market despite having owned despite having owned and purchased a lot of makeup in my lifetime. I, I don't delude myself into thinking that I have like a wide breadth of knowledge. I don't. I have a very um, particular niche that I like and it's the stuff that I like and I, I, I'm not under any pretense that I'm a product knowledge expert or that I know like all the stuff in one particular line because I'm, I'm happy with what I have. I'm happy with the range of stuff that I have. I'm happy buying just the eyeshadows from Pat McGrath because I know her eyeshadows kick major ass and I'm, I, I don't feel a need to buy her concealers and her powders and her lipsticks and whatever um, just because I, I don't feel a need to. I have my lipsticks from Kaleidos. I have my lipsticks from Maybelline. Those do their job and the eyeshadows do their jobs, and the blushes from Patrick Todd do their jobs. I mean, it's just kind of like everything in my collection has a place and a piece, and I have my favorites, and I don't feel a need to, to go wider. I like to go deeper. Um, so even if I were to buy, for instance, another, uh, another Dior highlighter palette, I like mine, and so if I wanted to expand my highlighter collection, I would probably go for a formula that I already like in my collection. Does that make sense? Like, it's it's easier to buy from the range of stuff that you already have if what you have is stuff that you like. For instance, my ColourPop products, I love my ColourPop eyeshadows. They're one of my most indispensable tools in my collection because they are really affordable, they're really high quality, they're pretty replaceable, and they're interchangeable. So they have like a modular um, system about them. And all of that makes them highly curatable, customizable, um, highly accessible because they're not very expensive. And you can access them in person. Um, there's lots of different reviews online. And as much as I could buy like literally everything else that ColourPop offers because they're very reasonably priced, I just don't feel I need to. I just don't feel like I'm called to do so and so I don't do it. Um, and what that means is I actually try a very, very small percentage of brands that are out there on the market because I'm not really getting PR. It's not like uh, brands are constantly like at my feet asking me to like try different things. And number two, like if I if I know that something works, why would I why would I try something else? <laughs> um, which is probably a very counterintuitive mindset to have as a, a beauty uh, enthusiast, beauty enthusiast in quotation marks, um, or beauty content creator. But I don't actually think it's a, a bad thing. I actually think it's a strength because that means that of the ranges that I do try, I'm very consistent in knowing exactly what it is that makes them special. Another thing uh, that I, 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 I am well aware of myself now is that I have a bit of a collector's mentality and I didn't like know this until literally this year when I bought like a ton of tarot decks <laughs> and my husband was like, yeah, I probably would have stopped at like two or three. You know, I imagine collectors to be people who collect full ranges of stuff. You know, like uh, when the Anastasia palettes came out and you would, for instance, collect all of the ones that came out. Or if you are like a Funko Pop collector and you collect all of them, and not only do you collect all of them, but another thing that I imagine collectors do is that they they keep things in, in good condition. And if you've seen any of my makeup, you, you would know that I don't keep my makeup in particularly good condition. This is not a great example because there's not a ton of pan in here. But um, I have makeup palettes that are very busted. You know, like they're not brand new by any means. And and nothing that I touch stays pristine for very long. And so I haven't really considered myself a collector, but now that I sit back and I think about it, 
what I just said about not wanting to go really wide in terms of like many different brands and instead really liking a lot of stuff from one brand and continuing to purchase from that one brand has shown me that when I try a new brand, it's dangerous because I could end up wanting to buy lots of different things. If you've watched the video that I have up, it's out already, um, about makeup products that I haven't purchased, but I really want to buy. And not only do I want to buy them, I want to buy the whole collection. You'll see just how bad it is, you know, like especially for stuff that looks really cute. Um, and so for me, that's like little blush pots and little eyeshadow pots and palettes and stuff like that. For me, if there's a range of something, there's always a chance that I'm going to want to collect like three or four of them. I don't really want to try like one of each thing. I really want to try four different colors, four or five different colors in one line. That's just how I tend to go. I, I can't say why and I can't say that I, I even knew this about myself until recently. I literally did not know. So that's part of it. Like part of it is damage control. You know, if I, if I, if I try, for instance, one of the, the brands that is top tier in terms of like what I would want to try. And then if I do want to try it, I'm going to try like five different things. It's rare beauty. I mean, look at their packaging, their tiny little blush putties. I've heard terrible things <laughs> about their blush putties um, or their, their, is it the liquid blushes? I, I just want like five. I want five. If I if I try Rare Beauty, I'm not going to buy one of each. I'm going to buy two or three of each formula. And that's not good for my wallet. And it's not reasonable because most people, when they try something, they're going to try like a smattering here, a smattering there. And they're going to like bite a little bit from everywhere. But I'm not. I'm that weird person who goes to the buffet and I buy like one full bowl one full bowl of the same thing, um, or many different flavors of the same thing. I'm trying a lot. I don't know what it is, um, but I do know that financially it's not a great decision, and waste-wise, that's not a great decision. It makes far less sense to buy five blushes of the same formula than it does to buy like a base, a highlighter, a primer, a mascara, an eyeliner, and then an eyeshadow palette and a blush and a lipstick, right? To buy six or seven blushes from one range makes so much less sense than trying a little bit of everything, but that's just who I am, and so to avoid that disaster, I just, I try not to, to do it. I try not to indulge. And then last but not least, um, this is probably the least important, <laughs> the least important part, uh, but, and it's psychological, but the last reason why I don't try new brands is because I think when you try a new brand, you're kind of buying into keeping up with that brand. And I don't know if that's just like me imagining it, but for me, I watch a lot of makeup content. I'm pretty aware of like what's being released, what the news is, what the tea is, like new formulas, new factories, you know, new drama, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I don't know what that says about me and, and my values and like what I prioritize in my life. I clearly, I, I could be doing different things with myself. Um, but you know, when I buy into a new brand, part of it is like, okay, I'm buying into this ecosystem in the same way that when you, when you, when you think about tech, right? Um, Right now, in my current stage of my life, I'm, I'm in the Apple ecosystem, right? I have like Apple products for my um, headwear, like listening, um, my watch, my phone, my laptop, you know, even like the air tags and stuff like that. So that ecosystem is what I've purchased into. And so the only thing I have to keep up with is iOS, whatever we're on at the moment. If, for instance, I start incorporating Samsung into my routine, like I have uh, like, a, like a Samsung watch and a Samsung headphone set, then I have to be aware of two more things, right? Like I have to find out how they play together, what they work like together, um, what's compatible, what's not, if there's new operating system updates and you know, whatever, like let's say stuff's not compatible. It's just like another layer of something that you have to consider. And obviously with tech, that's totally different because you're not replacing tech very often and you just have to make sure it works the one time. But change that to makeup where you've got like foundation products, you've got base products, you've got primer, you've got setting, setting spray, skincare. Um, then you've got like the seasons and how your skin interacts with those things. And then you've got textural uh, things. So issues of like cream and powder, like are those things gonna mesh well? Um, what about wear time? What about masks, putting on and off? Um, what about like fragrance, no fragrance? <laughs> like there's just so many different moving parts with makeup and especially because it's smaller. And so I have like a lot of different things. It's not like one set of headphones and one phone and like, do they, come? Do they are they compatible or are they not? With makeup it's like you buy from one brand and then you have to make sure that whatever you have is compatible with whatever you've already got in your collection and I just find that it's a lot more math to do I don't I don't know how to explain it but you know with new trends for example this year the dewy trend was like really like over the fucking top you know like people were dewy to the fucking gods yeah everyone was like a cream blush this cream stick highlight that like gloss over here gloss there whatever and I just kind of stepped back and was like that's just not something that I want to introduce to my collection because when you start to introduce that, you have to think about, okay, so like which glosses are compatible with powder products? Which glosses are best to go on a bare face? Which products can I use with a brush? Which ones do I use with a sponge? And I mean, which ones can I... Blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, I, I 
And it's not on purpose. This is not like a calculated move that I'm doing, but I'm finding more and more that I like to streamline stuff. I'm not saying that I do a streamlined makeup routine. Like this is clearly not a streamlined, quick, minimal <laughs> makeup routine, but it's it's predictable. It's predictable. I, I know what's going to work because I don't try that many new things and I don't need to keep up with questioning whether this is going to work with that, whether the new thing is going to be different from the old thing and whether the new thing is going to be with this new thing. Like it's just a lot less um, stuff to worry about in the same way that it reduces uh, mental fatigue, like decision fatigue to have like a uniform that you wear every single day <laughs> whatever like Steve Jobs did to like reduce his dis decision making fatigue by wearing the same turtleneck and glasses and pants and jeans and whatever every single day of his life um that's how I feel about not keeping up with brand new makeup brands because with every new brand there's like a new range of stuff to keep up with and then the new releases subsequently right you're kind of buying into that whole ecosystem uh for instance one of the the ones that I can think of very clearly is Ritual Defi which if you've been on my channel in the last year, you, you've seen that I went from not knowing about them or really care. Like I knew about them, like in theory, not really caring at all about them. And then in 2021, the year that I actually purchased some products, now I'm talking about them a lot more. I'm noticing like, what are the new formulas? I'm following them on Instagram. I'm liking their new things. Um, and I'm anti-hauling stuff because it's on my radar now. And you know, when you buy into a brand, I feel like you're also more likely to purchase again. It's kind of like, <laughs> your your brand virginity has been lost, right? If I buy from Westman Atelier and I try the blush, well, then what's the bronzer for me? What's the highlight? You know, like what's the difference between buying the iPods here and the lip, you know, palette there? It's all ridiculously expensive, but if I allow myself to do it once, why not do it again? And so <laughs> I just, I like having a little bit of that distance between myself and the brand because it allows me to not keep up very closely and to have a little bit of like an arm's distance away from something that could be dangerous. You know, a lot of what I'm, I'm realizing now after I've verbalized this, what a lot of this is, is damage control to make sure that I don't overspend because again based on my personality which I'm now learning about um it, it can be very easy for me to just like want all of the stuff like in a line what are all of the things that are good for me and then can I just buy all of them which the answer is yes but you shouldn't you know like just because you can does not mean you should so I I don't know if this is like the best most sustainable way to go about stuff in life I don't know if restricting the number of brands that I try is actually a very reasonable thing for me to do but at least in this depth year while I am on a highly restrictive like budget. Um, and again, like the depth year is not really about budget. It's not really about limiting how much I buy per se. It's really about deepening my relation to, to what I have already. But I think at least for 2022, I, I'm not going to be trying out any new brands. Who knows? I mean, maybe I will, <laughs> but at the very least I, I will be deepening my love for, for what I already have. And I think that that's fantastic. I actually don't think it's a bad thing to not try that much new. Uh, I think there's a lot of emphasis on newness on YouTube and on social media. And, you know, as a species, I think we really like novelty, but I'm, I'm here to tell you, if you like what you like and you, you know what you like and you, you stay in your lane, don't feel bad about it. I, I hope that I can make a space on my little channel here on YouTube that normalizes the fact that we're not getting new makeup all the time. Like most of us are not trying new things. Most of us are using what we like, what we have. And when a brand releases like a new thing, we trust them more. And so I think we should be careful to not trust a million and one brands, um, not because they're inherently bad or not because they're inherently shady or you know they're, they're trying to steal your money or whatever, but because as human beings, I don't think we can hold on to that much information. I don't think it's, it's good for us. And so I'm going to try to normalize that for myself is, is not feeling bad that I, I am a creature of habit. I think for a long time, I felt like if you were going to be a beauty enthusiast, if you were going to be on YouTube, if you're going to be a beauty reviewer of any kind, you really have to know all your stuff and you should have a wide breadth of knowledge. And I'm not, I'm not going to have that burden placed on myself anymore. I'm officially relieving myself of that responsibility because I don't think it's practical and I don't think it's good for my mental health. So I want to know what you guys think. If you're someone who likes to try lots of new brands, if you don't, and you're like me and you're a creature of habit and you just burrow deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, let me know. I'm so curious. If there are any brands that you think I would enjoy trying despite my aversion to new things, let me know that as well. And, you know, we'll put it on the list of stuff that I might purchase for next year. But um, I hope this was just an interesting video. I really just wanted to sit down and chat because, you know, I, there's so much stuff going out on um, Vlogmas, beauty Vlogmas these days. And uh, people are just like creating amazing, amazing content. And it always gets my, my brain, uh, the little gears in my brain turning. So I really appreciate you just chilling out and uh, and listening to me speak. Uh, I don't really know what I was intending, but thank you as always always for listening and being here. I love you guys and I will see you on the next one. Bye.